Well, let me start with wrestling elephants. So, let me go back to wrestling elephants. There, thank you. So, the Hadoop space, incredibly competitive, a knockdown, drag out fight across the major distributions. Myth or reality? Well, actually, this is a myth. Yes, there are many commercial distributions, seemingly new entrants every month, but the reality is we all share the same open source Apache code. This is one of the first markets that's actually been created by open source technology. And given the early stage of this technology, it's appropriate and in many times, many cases required to combine open source code with innovations to meet customer requirements. The result of this is an incredibly strong ecosystem. Hadoop is by far the fastest growing big data technology, and in fact, it's one of the top 10 fastest growing technologies overall in terms of job growth, of interest, I think, to many people in this room. This chart also serves as a reminder that you're in the right place. Focusing on Hadoop and attending this conference was a good choice. So Hadoop's at the center of big data, and this is in quite a contrast to the NoSQL market. The NoSQL market, there is no consensus. There is no common API. There is no ability to seamlessly move workloads across solutions. There is, however, one NoSQL solution that has an inherent advantage, and that is HBase. And HBase is integrated with Hadoop and included in every commercial distribution. So you might think, well, if it's included in every distribution, and every distribution shares the same open source code, then HBase must run the same across all distributions. And this is not the case. It's not the case because architecture matters. So what do we mean by architecture matters and what kind of a difference does this make? Well, let's look at the architecture of supporting HBase applications. And on the left-hand side, you see HBase that's running on Java, writing its data into the Hadoop distributed file system, running on another Java instance, writing into the Linux file system, writing to disk. To make matters worse, you have database operations trying to write to a write once storage layer of HDFS. On the right-hand side is an example of an architecture that takes open source code and combines that with architectural innovations, basically eliminating the Java dependency, collapsing those intermediate data layers, and removing the complexity so it's much easier to administer and it's much more performant. So that's a picture of the architecture. What are the actual results? Well, they're dramatic. So in orange, that's the result of the architecture on the left, and you see tremendous latency spikes. So imagine trying to program a real-time online application with HBase given those results. And that's in contrast to the blue line, which is towards the bottom, a little bit hard to see. But now you've got consistent low latency on a 24 by 7 basis. So you might say, well, this is one chart. You know, what's the complete story? And that brings us to our next topic. Is Hadoop ready for prime time? Now, many people, particularly those that work for large data warehouse vendors, are very cautionary about Hadoop. So, ready for prime time, myth, or reality? Well, the reality is that a significant number of companies are enjoying production success with Hadoop. Here are a few numbers. So one trillion lines of, of log lines are being analyzed by Solutionary as part of their security service. 90 billion ad auctions per day are processed with Hadoop by the Rubicon project, 
and they've surpassed Google in terms of ad reach. 1.7 events per month are processed by Comscore, the leading internet analytics company. Now, you might have a response similar to Alistair, who said, well, yeah, Jack, but these are Web 2.0 companies. I mean, traditional enterprises, they're still experimenting, maybe some lightweight ETL, but no one's really seriously using Hadoop in production there, are they? Well, the reality there is that there are significant companies with significant results from Hadoop. One retailer over 2,000 nodes of Hadoop, and it's a key part of their merchandising and retail operations, including the ability to leverage social media to better understand and meet the needs of shoppers. Or financial services, one company over 1,000 nodes of Hadoop, and they're using it to mitigate risk, to personalize offers, and to streamline operations. Comcast, the largest mass media and communications company in the world, is using Hadoop as part of their service to personalize advertising and perform multi-screen marketing for their customers. So rather than go on and share uh, use cases for healthcare and manufacturing and telco and government agencies, of which there are some really interesting use cases, I thought I'd share with you some of the more surprising production use cases for Hadoop. Let's start with garbage. Yes, even a waste management, they're using Hadoop. They're combining location information with delivery data and optimizing their fleets and saving millions. Whiskey. So the next time you're in Japan and you encounter a beverage kiosk that uses facial recognition to customize the interface, thank Hadoop. Hadoop's even being used to predict the weather. Climate Corporation is using Hadoop to help farmers protect and improve their farming operations worldwide. Now, can Hadoop do more for people? And I'm going to provide you a few more details about one of the award nominees, and that's the Aadhaar Project. So in India today, there is no social security card. It's difficult for the average citizen to prove who they are to open a bank account, to access government aid, to enjoy economic mobility. It's difficult for the Indian government as well, with over a billion dollars in aid classified as leakage due to corruption and fraud. And now, thanks to this project, they're poised to leverage the unique ID that everyone is born with and they're combining fingerprints and retina scan. The aim is for all 1.2 billion citizens to have this information and to put petabytes of information into Hadoop. It's basically a game changer for the Indian economy. So I've shared some of these examples with confidence because they're a subset of the over 500 paying MapR customers that are using Hadoop today. Many have switched from another distribution seamlessly to enjoy production success with MapR. And many of them are using it as an enterprise data hub. And when you have architectural innovations that provide full availability and data protection, including snapshots and mirror, it can serve as a system of record. And when you're comparing that, where 10,000s uh, $10,000 for a price per terabyte versus the few hundred for Hadoop, it's a dramatic change. So we've had a limited amount of time. We'd love to help you understand and separate additional myths from realities for Hadoop. I encourage you to go to our website where we have uh, a white paper on Enterprise Data Hub and also uh, come by our booth where Canonical, a partner, has contracted with the author of Hadoop for Dummies and has a Hadoop Buyer's Guide available. Thank you for your time. <laughs>